then bam, T boned me. Well guys, my uncle, he calls me walking with Calvin now. It truly does suck guys. And so, this happened a while back, but I thought it was only fair to show you guys, show you guys the car and tell you guys a little bit of what happened to it. <sighs> Got into a little bit of an accident as you guys can see, and a lot of you guys who know me already know what happened. And for the guys that just know me through YouTube, you guys have probably seen that I haven't been driving the Jeep anymore. I've been driving a Honda 1992 Suzuki Sidekick for if you guys weren't around when I was first driving it. <sighs> so let's hop in the Jeep and then I'll tell you guys uh, what happened to it. Just the inside. Nothing really too bad happens to the inside. Like, I think the window was already messed up. But there's that. And then there's that over there. But really, other than that, nothing really too bad happens to the inside. Just some stuff flew around a little bit. Had a lot of good memories in here. Yeah, so this is the inside. Now you guys are probably wondering what happened to it. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, but let you guys still let you guys know what happened. First week or so of summer, just got out of uh, soccer summer conditioning, and so I was on my way to the gym. And I think the route I usually took was blocked off for some reason. I think there's a train or something. And so I tried going around, and then it took me into a neighborhood. GPS took me into a neighborhood. I came up on this intersection, right? And in my head, I thought it was a four-way. And so I'm pulling up to the stop sign. Some other dude's pulling up to the road that's crossing, that's adjacent to mine. He's pulling up, and so we're like this. And so I'm looking at the dude, because he should have the right of way, because he's he got there first, and he's to the right of me. So I stop, he stops. I look over at him, and he just kind of waves me through. Like he's got his hand on the steering wheel, and he kind of waves me through. So I'm like, oh shoot, he's just gonna let me go. And so I'm not sure if I saw the car coming on the other side, like there's a, we're right here, and I kind of creep forward. And I'm not sure if I saw the car coming from this side or not. I think I did, but I just thought he'd stop because I thought it was a four way. And so I creep forward, and this dude, he's cruising and he's going too quick. And so, damn, there's flies are getting in here. But yeah. Okay, so he's cruising, I'm inching forward, and then bam, T-boned me. So when he hit me, he hit the back end, and so it started, the Jeep started spinning, and it spun right into the dude who just weighed me through. And so it was a freaking mess. The dude who hit me, he went and hit the curb. So three cars, one accident, and that's how it happened. But things happen, I'm just grateful no one was hurt. Wish I could have kept this thing for my whole life. I love this thing. It was, it's a freaking awesome car. And I've been looking for another one, but uh, I just haven't been able to find one. So, but yeah, like I said, this wasn't the point of today's video. All right, one more thing, guys. One more, real quick. Uh, if you guys, I think the Jeep is probably, probably broke beyond repair, but if one of you guys at home thinks you guys could fix this Jeep and help me out, that would be awesome because I'd love to get this thing up and running again, but uh, it'd take a lot of work. So I'd even be willing to help you guys with it. I know a couple friends that that work on cars, so they might be able to help me, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So with that out of the way, let's get back to smaller but better things. Guys, 
this is it. My 2002 Toyota MR2 Spider. It's a mid-engine sports car, which means the engine's in the back. It's, again, like the Jeep, it's a manual. 10 years newer than the Jeep, faster than the Jeep, convertible. And yeah, it's a dope little ride. My dad actually saw it on Facebook Marketplace like a couple weeks ago. It was actually an Andover, so me and my dad went to go look at it, test drove it, negotiated a little bit, and here it is. So let me show you guys a little bit, a little bit about it, and then we'll go and take it fishing. show you guys a little bit of the inside Let's see. all right guys so like I said manual transmission pretty much just a 2002 sports car on the inside it's got AC which is super nice that's a nice thing compared to the Jeep we got AC and then I'm trying to think what else we got a couple compartments not a whole lot of space in there glow box then we also got a cassette player for or bump to those cassettes. Got a CD player and I got my Bluetooth uh, adapter right there. And then we got cup holders, which is nice. And then on top of that, if you move back the seat, open up this, we got a little bit of storage back there not a whole lot but enough to put like a little tackle bag whatever as you can see i already got my fishing rod in there the previous owner stuffed a nasty towel in there for some reason and then we got the same thing behind the driver's side there's another little compartment in there but yeah so a nice little storage space not a whole lot of storage which is which is rough, but you gotta live with that if you want this, so. And then you guys are probably wondering how I'm gonna keep my rods in here. And the answer to that is just stuff it right beside me. Have the rods stick out the back. Cruise top down all four seasons, and we should be good. And then I also got some storage in the front. I'll show you guys, let me. It's in the glove box, pop that. Okay, so there's a little bit of storage. In the front, as you guys can see, there's a little compartment right here. And it's got a spare tire, and then I put my soccer ball in there. Because you always gotta have a soccer ball in the car. But yeah, so there's a little bit of storage right there on top of the storage we got behind the seats. It's a nice little ride. Yeah, we're gonna take it fishing now. Now that you guys saw the inside, the outside, and if you guys got any questions, leave them in the comments. And yeah. We only brought two rods today, but that should be all we need for this little pond. It's pretty grassy, so chatterbait and a worm should work perfect. Can't wait. I'm ready. Okay, guys, I've only been here once, but the time I came here is grassy and there's a lot of fish. And for some reason, I forgot to switch shoes. I'm wearing my new shoes. Alright, we're gonna start off in this corner. Throw a worm in there. 
overcast day and the, the rain should be should fire them up today keyword should it's been hot out lately Summer's about to end. I feel like I barely fished this summer. Carp are up shallow. I see another one's tail. Right, let's pick up that dang chatterbait. Last time I was here, I caught him on a fluke. It's pretty, pretty dang finesse. Let's try to chatterbait out just for a minute. Something bit. Big old carp. Oh, oh that was a stick. Yeah, I was about to say. Damn, that's a ginormous carp. Where are the odds he eats my chatterbait? right there it blew up on it I was dragging the worm across the water damn might be a good topwater day fish on Throw some grass for a second. It's such a light bite. Let's go. First fish of the day on the chatterbait. We might have found him. It's a dinky little dude, but I'll take him. I'll take him. something in here. Okay, this time guys, it wasn't my fault. GoPro got too hot and I decided to take a cast anyway. And boom, this dude decided to eat it when the camera wasn't rolling. Another dinky dude. This one was way out in the middle though. Cast it out to the middle, towards that fountain. Just let it sink and then start dragging it. Let's see if we can do it again. Got one. Again, a very good hook set on them. I just don't want to lose a big one. Oh, you let go. They're definitely biting. Press some little dinks though. If I throw like right up on the bank, I know I can catch them, but they're just little ones. Like right off the edge of the bank, there's like a little ledge and they'll just hide like right under the ledge gotta try over in that pipe over there just gotta be a fish in there fish on another little one popped off at the bank i was looking at my shoe Gotta get it far enough back to them, they'll eat it. Forget it, we're gonna throw on the, the buzz bait. 
take off the chatter bait, throw the buzz bait. Maybe we can get some bigger bites too. That'll be nice. All right, this is a ginormous buzz bait, so hopefully, hopefully we get some bigger bites. Oh, uh, there's no wind though. Forgot you're supposed to have wind for a buzz bait. Dang it. Forgot there's no wind. Yeah, they aren't really messing with this buzz bait. So right. we're gonna find one that's gonna wanna eat it. A big one. One little bite. Damn, I don't think I have any frogs in my box or else I would throw a frog. Frog would be a good bait for this pond. Okay. Well guys, that's that's a wrap. Would have fished longer, but I got a tournament tomorrow, so I'm gonna be doing plenty of fishing tomorrow, like almost like half a day. And it seemed like they stopped biting ever since I threw on the buzz bait, but it's whatever. And I hope you guys like the new car. We're gonna be whipping that thing around now, so I like it, I love it. Hope you guys do. And if you guys got any suggestions on what I should do, and then also, if you can help me fix my Jeep, uh, comment down below. So yeah, I'm gonna grab some food. As always, hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.